My name is Karen Ryan and I'm going to share with you some of the images, some examples of student work from the art craft design course from this year's uh, graduate show at Biffy. So the art craft design course, it's a one year level five QQI course. Uh, students cover a range of modules such as drawing, design, painting, ceramics, printmaking. And the idea is that students get to know how to use drawing uh, to research the world around them, how to use drawing as a starting point to generate ideas and then for those ideas to become finished ceramic pieces of prints. So here's an example of a print by one of our students. Um, so the, for the, the first half of the year up until Christmas, it's very, very much about um, introducing students to skills with the printmaking and the ceramics um, and then and with with the drawing and the painting as well. Um, uh, we, we give out briefs to students, we give a lot of guidance to students and a lot of feedback to students. And then after Christmas, students are allowed to uh, choose a theme and then engage with the research themselves, OK, in conjunction with further um, instruction from their teachers. So here's an example of some ceramic work by one of our students participating in this year's exhibition. Um, so you can see she's um, she's gone through the coil building process to build the jugs and then she's um, planned and, and thought about how to decorate them and then applied glazes. Um, and I'll just show you one more student so that you can see kind of what it looks like when you see like a collection of work together. So you can see that the link between what this student has going on here. So we have this is some of his painting, drawing, sketching design work, uh, some more painting um, and ceramics. So you can see the way he's concerned with the idea of character and identity. Um, I'd like to talk to you about another course, the Fine Art Practice course, which um, some students continue with after completing the Level 5 course. After completing the Level 5, some people also continue on into the Portfolio Preparation course, or some apply directly to college. Some, though, continue on and do the Fine Art Practice course, which is a, a two-year BTEC Higher National Diploma course. So we'll just look at two students' collections from this. So that the fine art practice course is um, a development of the art craft design course. So there's more drawing, more painting, more ceramics. Um, we add in photography as well, but it's very, very much about um, students investigating what makes them tick as artists. Um, so it's um, they're given a theme at the start of the year and, and then they engage with that theme in terms of experimenting with media experimenting with images. So you can see this student here is affected by the, the living conditions that we've had recently. So that the five kilometer restrictions as a result of the pandemic have forced her to look at her local environment. So she lives near the beach in Bray. So you can see the impact of that in her drawing. And then she's going down to the beach and, and collecting objects from the beach, pressing them into clay and making plaster casts of them. And that's what we get with this collection here. And then she's um, developing some ceramic bowls as well. So this is as a result of experimenting with different types of clay and glazes. And then here we have an example of her painting as well, very much affected by her local environment. And I'll just show you one other student just to see the variety of work that students produce in this course. So this student is very interested in photography. Her investigation is also to do with um, the, the immediate world around her and, and kind of again being confined to her house uh, as a result of the pandemic and just looking at the mundane or the ordinary and trying to make that look interesting. Um, you can see some ceramic work here also experimenting with lasers and um, we have an example of a print piece here. So sound and music is something that she was rediscovering as a result of the lockdown and I'll just leave you with this last piece. It's just a 30 second video um, and, and it, it's worth sticking with because it does change every 10 seconds or so. But um, this little video makes me smile. I hope you enjoy it too. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Annette Vella and I run the Art Portfolio Preparation course here in Biffy. I'm going to run through with you a couple of students so you can see the huge variety of disciplines that the students work in. First of all, we have Ali, who is a fine art painter. You can see the amazing studies of variety of forests around Wicklow. Studies of Sandy Cove, great sense of movement in the water. Powers Court Waterfall. And going back to some more studies of forests that are slightly more abstract and textural. In contrast, we have Alex's work, who is a graphic design student. You can see her interest was in more urban scaffolding and cranes. Amazing illustrations here. From the patterns of the scaffolding, she constructed a wire piece and took photographs of it reflecting in mirrors, which in turn led on to looking at these really interesting repeat patterns. And then finally, these kind of constructions of almost architectural linear futuristic patterns. Okay. Then we have Chloe, who's an animation student. Her subject matter was birds and crustaceans. But you can see, first of all, these storyboards of birds. Worked with Indian ink. And pro markers. And then we've got this great little fella that she designed and made a little character that is like a hybrid between a bird and a crab. You can see the kind of pinches and the wings. And then with this little fella who was designed for storyboards here, she has made some backdrops. Kind of in this kind of magical land with this little creature. And again, another storyboard using him. And then finally, we have a fashion student, Phoebe, whose initial research was all based on cactuses in the botanical gardens. You can see the fashion designs are based on the kind of prickly bits from the cactuses. And then if I move across here, you can see that these little swatches, these rectangular swatches are all based on repeat patterns from her photography of cactuses. And she has made these little shirt, the skirt and the trousers and all these swatches and textile designs are used on these garments. Really, really lovely pieces. And then finally, going back to her initial research of the botanical gardens, you can see the studies that she's done of the amazing glass house there and the skeletal quality it has. And as I move down here, you can see these fashion illustrations and designs based on the linear patterns. And then these are life size constructions on mannequins that have an almost kind of sculptural futuristic quality. And here are the garments here. So you can see there's a huge variety of different disciplines that the students work from and their portfolios end up being very, very different from each other. The film department in Bray Institute of Further Education is delighted to be part of our graduate exhibition 2021. Um, this year we have a small uh, amount of work from the film students being shown here in the exhibition. Um, this first piece of work here is a 27 minute long uh, documentary film uh, made by a group of the Higher National Diploma students and it is about the plight of trying to run uh, a local pub um, during um, the Covid times that we are uh, currently living through. Um, in addition, there are three short personal pieces here, each 90 seconds long, by Megan, Nathan and Roisin. So in the film uh, department in Bray Institute of Further Education, we run two courses. Uh, the first course is a level five uh, QQI certificate in film production. 
and that course is primarily for people who have never made a film before or who are thinking of trying to prepare a portfolio uh, of work maybe to apply to IADT or some other institution. Um, the course is very practical, uh, there are no exams, it is um, project based. Each student has to write and direct a documentary film. They also write uh, and direct a fictional film. Uh, and then alongside of uh, those projects, each student will study cinematography lighting, cinematography camera, um, and a host of other skills such as uh, editing um, and uh, script writing. Uh, we also run a, a two-year higher national diploma, which is uh, accredited by BTEC, which is an English qualification. And it is the equivalent of the first two years of an honours degree programme. And students can progress from this course uh, to do a single year in another institute, either in the Republic of Ireland or in the UK. And then with that one additional year, they have uh, an honours degree in film production. Um, and similarly, similar to our, our one-year course, the Higher National Diploma is focused on practical work. Um, the students have to create uh, longer and more complex pieces. Um, they have to write and direct uh, a fictional film. Uh, as a group, they create a half-hour documentary film. Uh, and then there's a range of other projects, such as the ones uh, that you're uh, looking at here. Um, the film students uh, in Bray Institute uh, have uh, access to a range of equipment. So while we um, complete many class exercises and we cover a whole range of um, techniques uh, and look at uh, existing films and how they were made, uh, the students uh, bring home all of the equipment, the cameras, the lights, the sound equipment, and they work with other departments within the college, with our, our acting department, or fashion design, uh, and other aspects of the college that you can see in our art exhibition um, on display uh, at the moment. And so uh, it's quite a um, rounded experience of the filmmaking process that the students get uh, to work with um, actors, costume designers, hair uh, and makeup um, personnel uh, trying to put together and completed films that hopefully will set them forth into uh, the film industry in Ireland to gain employment. My name is Bonzi McCann, and as coordinator of architecture, design, and technology course, I'm going to bring you through the Rogers exhibition for this. This is a QQI level five course, which prepares learners for entry to three courses in architecture and other related courses. The students explore principles of design and construction for a series of line projects. This year's uh, projects included a seaside shelter, an ecologist's hut, and a single story dwelling. Students use the projects to develop their skills in drawing and model making, starting with sketches to create their designs. They move to scaled hard line pencil drawings and finally produce measured computer aided drawings. Presenting design ideas is a big part of the course. And we have a number of project reviews during the year where students present their work to their classmates and are encouraged to learn from each other's work and indeed to comment on each other's work. Architectural precedents are also a part of the course and help the students to find their architectural language. The module is dedicated to history of architecture and includes site visits and a critical response from the students. 
the methods and theory of different building construction techniques and materials is also investigated. And this includes practical built project in the college. The modules covered in the course include design skills, drawing, architectural drawing, history of architecture, building construction, computer aided drafting, which includes AutoCAD and SketchUp, communications and work experience. Hello and welcome to the games development uh, part of the Bray Institute of Further Education Graduate Exhibition 2021. Um, what you're looking at here is a uh, the names of some of the students that completed uh, our various courses this year. Uh, most of these are first year students. And what I'm about to show you in a couple of moments is some of the work, the types of work that uh, these students do on while on our course. Um, so we run two courses, uh, games related courses at Bray Institute. Uh, we have a QQI level five, which is a kind of a foundation introductory course. And we have a, a, a level six uh, QQI, slightly higher level, which introduces more advanced uh, things like coding and so on. So if I just show you uh, one or two students here, you'll get an idea of the type of work that we uh, complete here. So even just looking at this image here, this is um, um, a 3D render uh, of a, a game from a game for a, from a second year student. Um, and it's just showing kind of like a pathway through which the player navigates in the game. So the student, it's up to the student to create everything themselves. Um, you know, we don't, um, you know, they're not allowed to kind of drag and drop in um, uh, too many things. Uh, they have to kind of create from scratch and design from scratch. So let's have a look at Aaron here. Aaron is a first year student. And um, at the top here, we have a link to his game. Uh, one of his games that he made this year, he would have made two games with us. This is um, a screen grab from one of his games. Um, and then down here we've a building and uh, the model 3D model of the building that featured in his game. And then this is a splash screen here for his first game that he made at Christmas. So it was a little kind of space shooter asteroid shoot em up game. And then I just skipped a couple of images there. So we've got a barrel and we've got a cone. And this is just an example of um, not only do they do 3D modeling, but also they have to look at texturing, uh, meaning bringing color uh onto their models and so on and you know a uh, uh, high level of detail where possible and uh, at the top here we have a link to uh, aaron's game and uh, let's jump in on someone else here let's try uh, maybe say adam for example so what adam here is he hasn't given us his game although he has made two games this year this is um some renders of some of the 3d work he has created and um, so adam as you can see likes to go for the kind of photorealistic uh end of things so again, using our 3D modeling software Blender um, and then adding textures and so on, make it kind of photorealistic. Uh, down here, we have a little YouTube video of one of his uh, animations. It's a, like a, a very short 12 second animation. So our, uh, Adam would have created everything in this, um, you know, model the spaceship, the asteroid, added coloring, the glow, and everything you see there is his. And it's just a little kind of humorous little um, uh, animation. Um, so again, first year work there. Um, Let's have a look at uh, Jan decided to go and show you kind of the drawing side of our course, right? So apart from, you know, not everything is done on the computer. Uh, so here's some of his drawing and so uh, concepts, you know, for games. Here is a 3D model of an asteroid and here's some more drawing and you know, character concepts. Uh, here we have a 3D character that he modeled uh, while on the course. Um, and again, a spaceship that he created for his early uh, Christmas game. 
So he would have been, you know, any of these created these kind of spaceships, they would have been on the course, maybe, you know, they would have only been made two months into the course. So um, we expect a lot from students early on and, uh, and they tend to enjoy it. And it's a, a great challenge. Um, Thomas Daly, let's have a look at him. This is um, a second year student. And again, he's into kind of the photorealistic end of things. Um, so all kind of uh, self 3D modeled uh, work. And then, um, you know, it's up to him to add texturing and so on um, to make it look great. OK, so some of the stuff looks real, uh, but believe me, this is actually a, um, a 3D model um, of a Nintendo Switch. And as we saw earlier, there's a, a little uh, render or a still from one of the games he made this year. Um, maybe we'll have a look at one more. So let's try maybe, uh, let's try Owen here. So again, here's a link to Owen's game on Simmer.io. Um, and here's some of his models and some screen grabs of his game. There's his character for his game. And then there's a kind of a level map, okay, uh, which is not a playable feature. Um, a sword featured in this game, and then finally, again, a little kind of walk cycle um, of his character. So not only do they have to model their own and design their own characters, but they have to create um, animations, of course, as well. So this character here now has got an idle cycle, and he's <laughs> he's uh, yawning, and uh, he's making faces, He's uh, and then he's beginning to, to walk, and now he's defending himself. So um, you get an idea of the type of work that we do, uh, and that's his die cycle, right? Uh, Fortunately, the poor character has to die if he gets shot by the, the main protagonist of the game. Um, yeah, so that's a really good, uh, I suppose, an overview of um, our games courses and to give you an idea. So I welcome you to uh, visit our website um, if, if it's possible. Uh, have a look at our exhibition for yourself and uh, experience maybe some of the game links that I skipped over there. This is our graphic design class. The graphic design is a two year course and at the end of it, the students achieve a higher national diploma. In the branding and identity unit, this student redesigned the branding for Power City. As part of the advanced graphic design studies unit, the student designed a wedding magazine. As part of techniques and processes, the student was asked to design a t-shirt and tote bag based on the theme obsessed. Um, so as you can see, the student is obsessed with coffee. This is some work that was done for printmaking class. And I'll just show you a section of an advertisement that the student created in digital animation class. Um, and it's an advertisement for Power City. first year fashion students here at Biffy, part of a two year higher national diploma course. Over the two years, the students will develop their fashion and textile design skills through academic and practical workshops, where they are encouraged to experiment with a variety of techniques and processes in the production of finished garments. Working on two different briefs this year, a fashion brief and a costume brief, the students produce four garments each. This is Johnny's work. He produced a pure wool jacket cropped short um, and his second garment was a polyviscose crop jacket again with sleeveless and for his costume he produced this neoprene short crop jacket with transfer print on the side. Claire, this is Claire's work, she produced two dresses exactly the same design um, one in silk and one in polyester and for her costume she produced this Poly neoprene gilet with transfer print on the front. And a ice dye t-shirt with screen printed logo on the front of it. Emily, this is Emily's work. She produced a neoprene short crop jacket overlaid with polyester organza. And for her second piece, she produced a 100% cotton denim jacket with 
top stitch detail. Hi folks, so just to give you a quick overview of the furniture design course in Diffie. Now I'm going to flick through these students uh, work and while I'm doing that then I'll give you a quick brief overview of the work that we do throughout the year. Um, so it's a one year course level five and there's no experience required to do the course. So a lot of our students start off with little or no knowledge. And um, not everyone, some people are experienced, but the way we run the course is that everybody gets paired back to um, the beginners and the, at the, the very first entry stages of woodworking. And this allows us to kind of refine any skills or any bad habits that people might have picked up um, through DIY or whatever like that, and really just try and refine their work. The little trinket box that you see here on the left hand side is the first project of the year and that is all done by hand and this is that's where we learn to um kind of mark out and use hand tools and so on and um, while the students are making that project then they will be getting machine training and that will allow them to when we come to this final project which is the main table uh, that they will um have a bit more machine machining knowledge uh, this little table that you can see now is one based around um structure so it's about teaching the students how to um, make a piece of furniture as structurally sound and again it's one of the ones we do in the earlier part of the year so that the students uh, have a bit of knowledge when it comes to making their final table and um, here we see it's a record table and a good use of uh, solid Irish timbers all our timbers are sustainably sourced and uh, they're all uh, natural Irish timbers as well. So we use nothing from uh, tropical timbers or anything like that. It's all sustainable and uh, ethically sourced. Um, wood turning is a part of our module or part of the course as well. So you can see here that we've got a stool and a bowl. So there's a few different techniques within making these bowl turning, spindle turning, off center turning and so on. And again, that gives the students a good variety to some of the things that they can make because you can mix these skills together. Um, the joints are all handmade. So again, there you can see the dovetail joints here in the cor on the edges and dovetail joints joining the rails here together. Um, all pieces are glued in the end, but that's with everything in, in the furniture, they, they'll usually be glued to, to secure them, but the joints are what provide the strength and dovetail joints are one of the strongest ones you can get. Um, and again, it's all handmade and solid Irish timber. This piece here is a piece of spalted beech. The spalted beech is actually a fungus that happens after the tree is felled and it, when it is lying on the forest floor, um, this kind of spalt grows up through the tree and puts this kind of uh, lovely effect into the wood and does create a really beautiful effect. You can see some of that. This, this one is, uh, particular is called flamed and it's a very similar kind of thing that grows up through the tree as it's grown and um, creates these beautiful effects and it's a very kind of natural uh, defect as such. Um, you can see here just on the last piece the influence that they get all the all the pieces are based around architectural or some sort of brief so uh, this particular one was taken from uh, an architectural design art deco of a skyscraper and you can see the influence that he's used in here to create this uh, lovely way of joining the bottom rails of the table. Rather than just having simple crossovers, he's used that um, that influence there to create what is a really nice design underneath the table. Um, and that's that's about it in terms of that. Um, any other questions, you can contact me uh, through the Biffy website and uh, applications are now open. Hi folks, uh, I'll just give you a brief overview of the jewellery design course and I'll flick through the students work as I just talk you through some of the things that we make. Um, so this course is new to Biffy, it's uh, just after completing its first year um, and as you can see we work with a wide range of materials in terms of the manufacturing and design of the jewellery. The idea is that uh, we don't uh, stick to one type of material because although a lot of jewellery is made from kind of fine metal and precious metals, 
Um, as a jeweler, as a jewelry maker, it is important to know how to use different materials such as timber and aluminium, brass and so on. Brass and copper is what we would refer to as base metals. Um, you can see here that this student has used a combination of uh, aluminium and timber to create these kind of nice little pieces and made it used this wood turning technique to create a little trinket box for her piece. Um, and again, you can see that they can make their own display stands with that skill of wood turning. Another thing that we can use the skill of wood turning for is to create the molds for these pieces. So in order to shape things, you need mandrels and you, you often need different templates and so on to um, create these different things. So you can kind of mold them out of timber and then you can shape the metal around that. Um, so as I said, we will use a combination of um, combination of aluminium, brass, uh, wood uh, to create these different things. Similarly, we have a brief that we use and students have to follow that. So you can see here on the left hand side, the idea was to make a collection of jewellery. Um, so you can see there's a nice pendant there and the two matching earrings to go with it. Um, you can see there's a nice bangle here in the front and some trinket boxes as well. Um, and that's just another close up. You can see the combination of the mixed materials where we have brass in the middle here and walnut and oak surround. And we have a walnut and aluminium combination there. Um, Katrina's is a good example of um, the mixed materials as well and how we can kind of create an effect that's just more than jewellery in itself. This is the first display stand which has used copper and walnut to create this really, really nice display stand. And you can see some of her copper and oak uh, earrings here in the shape of acorns um, and an influence from leaves as well. Um, we work through the whole design process um, each piece follows a brief and um, so there is an outcome and uh, then the student makes a, the piece based upon uh, whatever it is that they design in design class. Um, as I said, it's a one year course and uh, we work closely with designers, drawing tutors and um, a good mix of uh, practical classes as well.